Pepe continued along the track, La dwelling in gloomy thought, searching for the right words to dissuade his mistress from this meeting when he was interrupted by cause. Once more, four large black crows flew along the track and circled around their heads. The hag's guides! La's voice held a note of panic. The little band halted. Emily stared down the trail, but there was nobody there. Her gaze passed along the path into the wilderness towards the horizon. Her gaze lingered on the distance, so they weren't focused on the figure who was standing in front of her, where there had been no one a moment before. The hag! Emily's eyes and mind fought a private battle. Her stare fixed on a malign creature leaning on a blackthorn staff, ten paces away. Her mind told her this apparition was impossible. She stared at the malign creature. Her heart and stomach suddenly felt like Lars. This was no ordinary being, but one so wicked that she could feel the harm projected pass over her body like an evil caress. Behind Emily, three or four pixies began to cry. Under a crown of nettles, the hag's hair was wintry white and fell straight to her shoulders. Her eyes were colourless like slivers of ice, two hollow slits peering from a haggard face, as worn as the fading year. Draped around her bony shoulders was a woven cloak of wilted weeds, which fell aside as she raised an arm and pointed a long-nailed finger at Emily. I'm going to turn you into a ghoul, she hissed through yellow pointed teeth. You'll be more dead than alive, my pretty one, and not so pretty. The hag cackled, and her voice rose menacingly. Not much flesh, only bones bound in skin, bound in skin. The black kite swooped around the trembling little band, screeching in unison with the hag's laughter as if sharing the cruel joke. The hag's eyes fixed Emily's yellow bracelet. Emily wasn't sure, but perhaps there was a hint of fear in the hag's voice. What happens when I rip them off your wrists, my lovely? Emily's knees shook, but she forced herself to take a step forward. She raised her arm, displaying the flowers to the hag, her voice weaker than before. Horrible old witch, you daren't come near them. Look out, Adam yelled just in time. Emily snatched her arm away as a swooping kite, vicious talons fully extended, failed by a hair's breadth to tear the bracelet from her wrist. Adam wasn't so lucky because a second kite swooped, its talons gouging his cheek. He cried out in pain and blood cursed down his face. Mopping it with his shirt sleeve, he held it there to stop the flow. Another kite caught Lax unawares as he was staring open-mouthed at Adam. Its talons hooked around his fragile bracelet and snatched it away the hag's laugh, more like a shriek of glee, almost pierced their eardrums. The witch raised her finger again and pointed at Lax. The small band of pixies, Emily and Adam, watched in horror as the elderly pixie began to shrink before their eyes. To begin with, he didn't have much spare flesh, but now his cheeks sank inwards. He seemed all eyes. His arms and legs dwindled until they were little more than skin and bone and what little grey hair he had fell out. The hag lowered her hand. She preferred to leave the pixie just enough life to suffer and serve as an example to the rest. Lax bent slowly with great difficulty and picked up a stone. He wanted to make a valiant attempt at defiance, but his poor body was too weak. He only succeeded in throwing it a few feet towards the hag, whose evil face contorted in rage. She raised her finger again, and Lax staggered. Under the rags that passed for his clothes lay a crumpled heap of bones without flesh. Emily managed another step towards the hag, who screamed and stepped backwards, her face twisted in fear, fury, and confusion. While her eyes were still fixed on the flowery band at Emily's wrist, her lips moved rapidly trying to chant a spell to ensnare them like a spider trying to trap its victim, but for whom the web wouldn't spin. The frustrated hag realised that her magic had no effect against the bracelets. She bared her teeth and hissed. Only ancient law saves you from my will. 
If I ever find you bare of the cursed weed, I shall change your fate, my lovely. I promise you it will not be a happy end for you.